This is the refreshed Mark II Volkswagen Tiguan and this is a list of questions I hope to answer during this brief first drive here around Hanover and Wolfsburg. Join me for a ride. The Volkswagen Tiguan launched in 2007 and since then it sold more than 6 million units worldwide. The Tiguan is currently VW's best-selling model. Of course, historically, the all-time best-sellers are the Golf, the Beetle and the Transporter. The Tiguan is also the third best-selling SUV globally after the Toyota RAV4 and the Honda CRV. Right on Tiguan's back are the Hyundai Tucson, the Nissan Qashqai and the Kia Sportage. So, the competition is stiff. Meanwhile, on the old continent, the Tiguan rules in its segment. Beside the regular Tiguan, there is also the extended wheelbase all-space version with an optional third row of seats. The first question I get during facelifts is usually, what's changed? From the outside, we get the new larger grille with a larger logo. Apparently, this is supposed to look more like the Touareg or the Atlas. The latter is not offered in Europe. Does it look more like the Touareg or the Atlas? Let me know in the comment section below. As standard, the Tiguan gets LED headlights and top trim models get the IQ Light Matrix LEDs. From the back, the Tiguan badge is now spread across the tailgate and the all-wheel drive models get a 4-motion badge with a modified font. And there is no longer an off-road pack, which in the pre-facelift model got you things like a cover under the engine and a modified bumper for better approach angle. Does anybody take their Tiguan's off-road anymore? How about the engine lineup? At launch, the facelifted model gets a 1.5 TSI engine with 130 or 150 horsepower, front-wheel drive, there is a 6-speed manual or a 7-speed double-clutch transmission, the latter is an option on the more powerful variant. Depending on the market, you may get a bit more choice in the diesel department, with output ranging from 122 to 200 horsepower. The base engine is mated to a 6-speed manual transmission and comes in front-wheel drive only. The 150 and 200 horsepower motors come with DSG. The 150 horsepower can be all-wheel drive. The 200 horsepower diesel comes with 4-motion as standard. There's also going to be an e-hybrid PHEV with pure electric range of around 50 km and a Tiguan R with a 2.0-liter 320 horsepower TSI motor, all-wheel drive and torque vectoring. It also gets larger disc brakes, a sporty body kit, sport seats, optional Akrapovich exhaust, etc. What do we get as standard? The Tiguan comes in basic Tiguan, middle, life and top elegance or R-line trims. The R-line is not the same as the Tiguan R. The base Tiguan gets things like 17-inch alloys, LED headlights, multifunction leather steering wheel, proactive passenger protection with front assist, multifunction display or MIB3 infotainment system with a radio and 8 speakers. The Elegance and R-line get things like digital cockpit, matrix LED headlights, ambient lighting, Elegance also gets electrically operated tailgate and silver roof railings, while the R-Line gets touch panels on the steering wheel. Which takes us nicely to the touch interface in the refreshed Tiguan. Gone are the AC buttons and knobs, instead we get this touch panel down here. I realize there are voice commands, which work in some markets, and climate control, once set to optimum temperature, you know, doesn't need to be changed too often. But do I really need to take my eyes off the road to make sure what I actually pressed? The light switch, for example, which I never use because it's set to auto, remained unchanged. Physical knob. Perhaps the touchpad version would require more of, more of a change down here to the panel over the knee and that would be too expensive. I don't know. 
We've seen the new infotainment system in the refreshed Passat. Now also the Tiguan has an onboard eSIM card, which makes it possible to use the WeConnect services. As standard, that includes things like emergency assist or scheduling a service. If you get the WeConnect Plus, that gets you mobile online services like notifications that a car has left a set perimeter, online theft alarm, car status, parking location or remote activation of the car heater. We Plus Connect is free for the first three years and then it costs 7 or 17 euro a month depending on the data transfer. In the Passat, there was also talk of additional services in the future like We Connect Fleet, Fleet Management, We Park, Parking Search, or We Experience POI recommendations. What happened to those? We Park is available in some German cities. We Connect Fleet is available in certain countries. We Recommend isn't here yet. The MIB3 infotainment in the refreshed Tiguan gets wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, standard on higher trims. Did the refreshed Tiguan get some new driver aids? Yes, it did. The facelifted Tiguan is ready for semi-autonomous driving. The driver still has to keep their hands on the wheel and take over if need be, but the car can take some load off the driver. Adaptive cruise control together with active lane assist and satnav is now called travel assist. The system works between 0 and 210 km per hour for cars with automatic gearbox and from 30 km per hour for cars with manual gearbox. Since Travel Assist uses traffic sign information from the camera as well as from navigation, I wonder how it is going to cope when I'm using Android Auto navigation. In the Passat, using Android Auto cut off adaptive cruise control's reaction to the speed limits, for example. So, what's it like here? Well, actually, right now I'm driving using Android Auto navigation and the car reacts perfectly to the speed limits, two other cars on the road, the lane assist works, everything works, so I'm happy with that. It will slow down for cars in front, it will slow down for, um, for speed limits, and it will accelerate. On the motorway, it will accelerate up to 130 km per hour, even on the German unrestricted autobahn. If you want to go faster, obviously you would have to do it by yourself, Although the other bits of the system, like uh, adaptive cruise control without traffic sign recognition, will work even up to 210 km per hour, apparently. If you dare to go 210 with adaptive cruise control, I wouldn't. Like in the Passat, also here, Tiguan uses capacitative sensors on the steering wheel rather than steering wheel angle information to make sure you keep your hands on the wheel. In older models, you often got false positives, especially on long straights. So, is the lane keeping assist any better now? Oh, there is no lane changing assist. Well, anyway, as far as I'm concerned, it's better it doesn't cut in all the time even when i have my hands on the wheel and uh, even if i'm not holding the wheel right like i'm not supposed to be doing right now uh, it will first give me a little warning and then it'll beep i hold the wheel for a second and everything is fine again so it works Also, the lane assist system now doesn't need to see the lines painted on the road as it recognizes gravel shoulders as well as green belts in the road. Of course, in optimum conditions. After all, this is not yet a fully autonomous car. Has something changed as far as ride and handling is concerned? Well, uh, the car is fine as it was. My problem, which I remember from the previous Tiguan and, well, the pre-facelift Tiguan, and it's still here, it's this hesitation when you, for example, approach a junction very slowly, you look around, everything is fine, you want to go on, you want to go on, go on your way, and then there is this, 
moment of hesitation, the engine doesn't know what it's doing. Well, I'm sure it knows what it's doing. It's more of a um, emissions thing. It wants to keep the emissions low. And we're talking driving in normal mode. I'm sure if you're in sport mode, it's better, but you don't drive in sport mode normally, do you? Similarly, when you reverse from a parking space and you put the car from reverse to drive and you know, normally you just put it in drive and you would like to take off. And here again, there is this slight moment of hesitation, which I don't really like. As far as the cabin sound insulation is concerned, soundproofing, I can barely hear the car, which just overtook me. Here's another one. I can barely hear them. So the soundproofing, at least in the front of the cabin, is good. I'm sure this car has got these, what do you call them, acoustic windows. However, what I do hear all the time is when the tarmac changes here on the motorway. There are stretches of motorway with the rougher tarmac, like here, and I can very, very much hear the road underneath me right now. However, there are also patches of smoother tarmac where it's much more quiet. So I wouldn't mind a bit more soundproofing from the underside. And, uh, you know, maybe it's also to do with the tires. Something to, uh, something to uh, pay attention to if you do a lot of motorway miles. I mostly drove the 150 horsepower 1.5 TSI variant because this is what customers choose in Poland. During the few hours with it, I got about 6, 6.5 liters per 100 kilometers extra urban without pushing the car too much. Of course, this result is not representative. Meanwhile, the 2 liter diesel gets something VW calls twin dosing. Two catalytic converters get two separate AdBlue injectors. One is closer to the engine and it works as soon as the engine starts. The second one is further down the exhaust system where exhaust gas temperature is much lower. The second one works when the engine is under heavy load, like during high speed driving or towing. Speaking of towing, the Tiguan can still tow up to 2.5 tons. The options list includes the trailer assist system, which is supposed to make it easier to reverse with a trailer. I tried it during the Touareg launch event and I was as useless with it as I was without it. Only a day before the event, I found out we'll also get to drive the e-hybrid and the R, which were previously described as near production ready prototypes. And apparently they still are because we didn't get the final spec or pricing. This is a very short ride in the new Volkswagen Tiguan e-hybrid. That's a PHEV plug-in hybrid with a 13 kWh battery with WLTP range of about 50 km. Until yesterday, this car was still called a near production ready prototype, so there was very little known about it. And until I came here today, I didn't know I was going to be driving it. So anyway, 245 horsepower, a bit of torque steer. This car has a 150 horsepower petrol engine and a 115 horsepower electric motor. And together with some losses here and there, this gives us 245 horsepower. Or does it give us exactly 200? No, it doesn't. Anyway, uh, 245 horsepower. Um, it's very clever in a way that the uh, navigation system will let you optimize your drive so that you make the best use of this 50, uh, 50 kilometers electric range of these 13 kilowatts, kilowatt hours. Uh, it means that as you're going into an urban area, the car is likely to switch to electric and when you're going along a motorway it's more likely to use the petrol engine also if you have your destination input in the sat nav it will tell you well it will adjust your propulsion depending on what you want to achieve whether you want to have some uh, energy electric energy left at the end of your destination to go through some urban area etc etc as a car to drive it feels pretty normal most of the time except 
when under heavy acceleration and you get some torque steer. It's very quiet. It's uh, it's nice that Volkswagen has uh, done something with the uh, with the soundproofing in the in the facelifted Tiguan. It's pleasant enough. The steering is a bit light. Well, not a bit. It's just lifeless. But you know, you don't expect much from a PHEV unless you buy a Porsche. If you want to see a Porsche PHEV very fast Porsche, click the link, which is somewhere around here. And now I'm going to switch this for something ever so slightly more exciting. My main complaint about the e-hybrid is that it's front-wheel drive only. It's a shame because with this much power, even on dry sunny day, there's a lot of torque steer. Perhaps VW is going to tweak it slightly before the car goes into mass production. Then I got to drive the Tiguan R. As the afternoon rush hour was approaching quickly, I found an empty service road where I checked what the Tiguan R is capable of. See for yourself. Sorry for the shaky cam, but this really was a service road. So, what else has changed inside? Not much. The plastics below the elbow level are still hard, though I have to say the car interior is very solid. Theoretically, storage on top of the dash disappeared and has been replaced by one of the eight speakers, regardless of the stereo variant, or so I was told. But then I got into the R, which had the basic stereo, and it still had a cubby up there. Again, the Tiguan R was a near production ready prototype, so this could still change. There are now two USB-C ports in the front. A lot of space in the glove box is still wasted by where the CD changer used to be. Who uses CDs anymore? Well, I suppose my parents still do. They drive the first gen Tiguan and my dad doesn't want to sell it. In the back, the seat still slides like in the first Tiguan and the backrest tilt is still adjustable. There is a third zone climate control and now besides the 12 volt socket there is also a USB-C port. Picnic tables are out, small pockets on top of the seat are in. The boot volume is 615 liters on paper. In real life it's more like 400 liters with a mini spare. You'll get more if you slide the seat forward. There is a double floor and a couple of large shopping bag hooks, a 12 volt socket, a 230 volt socket and levers to fold the rear seats. You can close the tailgate remotely with gesture or by pressing a button but no separate button to lock the car as the tailgate closes. Prices of the refreshed Volkswagen Tiguan start at €28,205 for the 130 horsepower front wheel drive 1.5 TSI 6 speed manual transmission model. The cheapest diesel will set you back €30,500. The cheapest all wheel drive diesel costs almost €39,000. This is VW's recipe for success. Not great, not terrible, but people seem to like it. Do you? Perhaps you own a pre-facelift model or the first gen. How is it to live with? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, join me every Friday at 3, for, for Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time. Oh gosh, I'm spitting. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.